Are continuous glucose monitors the newest disordered eating tool? If you've been on social media in recent months, you've likely seen a ton of creators inserting big round patches into their arms to track their blood sugars all day. I've had so many CGM brands reach out to me with sponsorship opportunities, basically ask me to promote these to the masses. And no matter how great the offer, I've consistently said no. And today, I'm gonna tell you all why. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I'll be giving my professional take on the trend toward healthy people without diabetes using continuous glucose monitors, aka CGM. A huge quick shout out to my colleague, Aaron Davis, for assisting on the research here. Aaron is a fellow RD and diabetes educator practicing from a weight inclusive lens. So if you are struggling with your blood sugars, definitely reach out. She is amazing. And all of our contact info and links are below. Also also a trigger warning that I will be discussing disordered eating, so please keep that in mind and feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive. And finally, check out the links below to my new free downloadable HTC ebook, as well as my LTK page where you can see what I'm wearing today. Okay, I need to jump in here super quick to tell you about this product that literally changed my life. Okay, I'm being a little bit dramatic, but I have honestly never been more excited and passionate about a brand that I've partnered with. Let's talk about Z-Biotics. So I am not a huge drinker, mainly because it hits me super hard. And even after like a single glass of wine, I am a shell of myself the next day. Without fail, alcohol will interrupt my sleep and it flares up my IBS. So it's like a risk benefit analysis if I decide to imbibe. But this Z-Biotics probiotic drink has literally been a game changer. Ask any of our friends and family that we go to dinner with, we do not leave the house without our Z-Biotics. I'm currently packing them to go to the cottage because I know I'm gonna need them. And I've literally turned everyone I know onto this stuff because we are all just too old to rally after a night of drinking. But let me explain to you guys how this works. So this is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic that's been scientifically designed to break down the byproduct of alcohol, acetaldehyde, that's responsible for feeling not so great the morning after drinking. So the way it works is that you drink your bottle of Z-Biotics before you have an alcoholic drink, and the probiotic produces a unique enzyme like the one that your liver naturally uses to break down the byproduct responsible for the not so fun morning. This is absolutely not an invitation to binge drink. Like alcohol is still not a healthy food and it should always be treated as a substance to be enjoyed in moderation. As I mentioned, overconsumption can lead to poor sleep, digestive distress, liver damage, and probably a lot of bad decisions. If I take my Z-Biotic and I stick to my modest one or two drinks max on occasion, I wake up feeling amazing and I'm way more likely to play with my kids in the morning instead of putting them in front of the TV. Like I said, everyone in my immediate circle is absolutely obsessed and I don't think I will ever have a drink without my Z-Biotics again. So if you want to give Z-Biotics a try, go to zbiotics.com slash abbysharp or scan the QR code on the screen right now and use my promo code abbysharp to get 15% off of your first order. They also offer a full money back guarantee if you're not satisfied with your purchase. But honestly, if anything, you're probably going to be disappointed that you didn't buy more. The 4th of July weekend is bound to have some sparklers and hot dogs and summertime cocktails. So if you want to avoid the rude awakening, make Make sure you order your Z-Biotics on time. Okay, so first up, super duper quickly, a CGM works by tracking your blood glucose level via a sensor under the skin that can then relay information about your blood sugar levels in real time. Often they're combined with like an insulin pump for folks with diabetes to deliver the most accurate dose of medication without having to count any carbs or be subject to human calculation errors. We also have research on patients with prediabetes and type two diabetes that CGM use can potentially help support healthy behavior modification. So for example, the idea is that if an individual with diabetes consistently sees their blood sugar spiking after they eat, Pizza, for example. Pizza time. 
it's possible that this could encourage them to try maybe having a salad first to try to flatten out the curve. So I do think the benefits of CGMs for the population that they've been studied and validated AKA folks with insulin resistance and diabetes likely outweigh the risks we're gonna discuss. But the CGM market isn't just stopping at the 37 million Americans with diabetes. These devices are expected to reach over 15 billion in sales by 2030 with over 200 clinical trials underway, including studies on their use in folks without diabetes, which likely explains why we've seen so many non-diabetic influencers and content creators get sponsored by CGM brands, using it almost like an alternative nutrition metric to like calorie counting on MyFitnessPal. <laughs> There is now a whole genre of online content of creators sharing them eating like a single food and then looking at the data from their CGM. Often when they do see any kind of increase in blood sugar, they make a huge deal out of it and then they paint that food as inherently bad. Take this guy eating peaches for example. He like waxes poetic about all the important health benefits and nutrition in a peach. And then he looks at his graph and he sees, oh my God, the peach spiked his blood sugar to 9.4 millimoles per liter. After which he concludes he would be worried to add it as a regular snack. That while peaches have health benefits, I will be worried not to add it as a regular snack if I want to keep my blood sugar balance. Um, did he miss the point that his blood sugar like immediately went back down because his pancreas is working normally to bring blood sugars back into regular range? So suddenly one single metric has the power to turn impressionable people watching off of a nutritious whole food like a peach when we have ample research that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables like peaches, 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 help reduce the risk of diabetes, insulin resistance, and obesity. And that is fucking dangerous shit. Another common example I've seen a lot on TikTok is oatmeal. We see a lot of oat slander these days in the CGM community. If a food could be fake news, that would be oats. We've been told oats are so good for you, complex carbs, digest slower, good for your blood sugar, etc. But I have a CGM on. And I've tried this over and over again, and notes are a disaster. And a lot of this hate seems to be based around these CGM readings, showing that you get this big spike post oatmeal. So you got all these people out there calling out the idea that oatmeal is healthy. Fake, fake news. news. With creators making these sensationalized statements that we've all been lied to all these years by big corpse pushing big oat. Guys, this is incredibly short-sighted and also unnecessary fear-mongering. Again, in folks without diabetes, that curve goes down pretty fast. And if you choose something like rolled oats or steel cut over quick, rolled oats in the steel cut oats are a better choice than the instant variety oats. It's barely a blip. Not to mention just adding something to your oatmeal like nuts, peanut butter, fruit, seeds, etc. like most people do can significantly lower the glycemic response. Again, looking at each individual food's impact on blood sugar in someone who doesn't have blood sugar regulation problems is missing the forest from the trees. If the concern is the risk of diabetes, we actually have specific research on oatmeal showing that it's actually beneficial for folks with type two diabetes. And if weight gain is the concern, we have research showing that oats help to support weight loss. So yeah, all this oatmeal hate is the real fake news, if you ask me. But let's just imagine that maybe you were to just eat plain oatmeal without any protein powder or nuts or seeds or eggs in there, just like straight up quick oats in water, which sounds like f***ing torture, but let's just work with it. What is the big deal with like a little blip in blood sugar in healthy folks with healthy pancreases? Honestly, nothing. The kids are gonna be all right. Fluctuations in blood glucose are completely normal. Increases in blood glucose after eating carbs is actually how our body fuels our activity and other healthy bodily processes. In a person without diabetes, you would expect that your pancreas will deliver the appropriate amount of insulin to effectively and efficiently lower that glucose level to normal levels without 
any kind of intervention at all. So even if you were to eat like a whole container of straight up cotton candy, your blood sugar will normalize. So you don't have to like freak out about it. That doesn't mean that we want to be on a constant blood sugar roller coaster. Like if you did just eat a bin of cotton candy, you'd probably experience a bit of an energy surge and then a bit of a crash. And ultimately that just, that just doesn't feel good. And if we're chronically exposed to a diet that's rich in really high calorie, high glycemic index foods, eventually we can kind of poop out our pancreas and or increase our body fat, both of which can increase our risk of type two diabetes over time. So as a dietitian, do I recommend wearing a CGM if you don't have diabetes? Well, judging by the fact that I've turned down a lot of lucrative sponsorship deals in the past few months, it's probably clear that my answer is no. At this point, there's actually very little good data to suggest improved health outcomes with CGM use in folks without diabetes. One study found that in people without diabetes, blood sugar levels were within the healthy normal range 96% of the time. Suggesting, surprise, surprise, healthy people's pancreases work in bringing those numbers effectively down. Another super, super, super small pilot study on 19 obese individuals found that wearing an activity tracker and a CGM together help to increase their motivation to exercise, which is great. But this study was like 10 days long. And I don't know, most people are motivated with like a new expensive gadget for a few weeks before eventually the novelty wears off. So at this time, there's really no good research to suggest any major benefits for folks without diabetes. That said, I can think of a lot of risks. First of all, a blood sugar reading is just one data point and a transient one at that. And when a single transient metric informs what, when, or how much we eat, we really quickly lose trust and connection with our innate wisdom. Are you coming out, you know, no different than occasionally weighing yourself or looking at the calories of certain foods you eat? An occasional check-in on your blood sugars, of course, can help to inform future choices. But I would never recommend a healthy person weigh themselves after every single meal. So why would they need to be checking in on any other external metric multiple times a day? That's just some food for thought. Not surprisingly, there is a growing concern in the medical community that this trend of healthy people using CGMs to track their meals will quickly become the next clean eating in orthorexia diagnosis. It's really important to have steady glucose levels throughout the day. I've learned all this recently and become so obsessed with it. So while CGMs may ease the cognitive burden on folks with insulin dependent diabetes, they're very likely to do the complete opposite for healthy folks. I also worry about the messaging that I see in a lot of this CGM content online, like swearing off a perfectly healthy food like a peach because it spikes your blood sugar may very quickly take almost any carb containing food completely off off the table unless it's eaten in some specific order or with other specific foods. Most people really don't need an app to tell them that they feel better after having like a generally balanced meal than they do after having a big slice of cake. Why do they make this so hard for me? And I do worry that seeing that blood sugar spike after a celebratory piece of birthday cake will just serve to reinforce the common narrative that carbs are public enemy number one. When in reality, if that was the case, carbs wouldn't be our body's preferred source of fuel and we wouldn't have effective regulatory mechanisms in the body to maintain blood sugar homeostasis and we wouldn't have ample evidence that there's very little difference long-term in weight loss when we combine going low carb with low fat. This all just makes healthy eating way too f***ing complicated. And this is really why I created my hunger crushing combo. I really wanted to give people an evidence-based guideline to like effortlessly and naturally build out balanced meals and snacks. Ones that would keep you satiated longer and help with blood sugars without any deprivation or obsession. I definitely did not want people to get lost in the details of numbers or calories or portions or blood sugar. So when you turn a single reading into a rule that you can never eat a naked carb again, or that you can only eat foods that basically flatline your blood glucose all day, you distort the data into another potentially disordered obsession. And listen, I am all about data and knowledge. 
And we are so lucky today that we have a lot of great technology to help inform our health knowledge, even if it does cost thousands of dollars per year. For some people, that will absolutely be worth it. But when we get lost in the minutia of the health data, we miss the forest from the trees. We stress over the whole meal and we lose sight of the entire day. Or most importantly, we forget about the overall lifestyle, including exercise, stress, sleep, etc., and not just what we eat. All of these things can play a role in blood sugar control, weight management, and the risk of chronic disease. Looking good. Stress specifically is a major contributor to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. I think for a lot of people, seeing these numbers can be really triggering and stressful as f So it actually may end up having the opposite of intended effect. Hold the line, this is going to 350 for 30 to 35 minutes. Multitasking. Anyways. It is absolutely possible that we will one day have research showing that CGM use in non-diabetes patients may help to detect prediabetes early, or it might help optimize exercise or mental stamina. But at this point, like right here, right now, it feels like it mainly just serves to give people the illusion of control over their health. An illusion. So I will absolutely keep my eye on the research and when it proves that the benefits of us all wearing CGMs outweigh the psychological risks, I will be happy to change my tune. But until then, I say focusing on energy levels, hunger, alertness, attention span, and stamina, and thinking about building those balanced meals a la my hunger crushing combo is more than enough to inform food choices for blood sugar control. And on that note, folks, I've got a mess to clean up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got more questions, leave them below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I know it is a pretty sensitive topic right now, so hit up the comment section. Don't forget to check out my hunger crushing combo ebook. You can find a link to that in my description and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye!